This is lesson 2.3 in Trig, and it is only two pages long, so it shouldn't be too terribly long to do. Anyway, this is finding trigonometric function values using a calculator. Yay, you can finally start using a calculator. And what we're doing is, first of all, looking at discovering what things like the sine of 49 degrees 12 minutes is. So, if you remember from section 1.1, what we do with 49 degrees 12 minutes is we change it into a decimal. 12 minutes in a degree, so 12 over 60, and it becomes 49.2 degrees. So then we just hit our sign button of 49.2 degrees, and we get 0.756 nine nine da 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 and remember we just round to the fourth decimal point so it would be that there 0 0.7570 all right you also should have a button on your calculator and let's see if I can get us a calculator here to show you okay so there's a calculator you have a button. Let's see if I can find it here. I'll use yellow. Right here. That button, well in fact it's the equal sign here. But that button says, if you hit second, that'll give you that yellow. DD2 DMS. So, it's saying that it will take to degrees decimal to degrees minute seconds or vice versa. So you should be able to put, and see here's the vice versa. Um, on this particular problem, let's get rid of all my stuff here. Move my calculator, get rid of this. Alright, so let's say that they're asking you to find um, 49 degrees 12 minutes. <clears throat> so you push, should be able to push 49 and then push this button because it says we're changing degrees, minutes, seconds to decimal. So 49, push the button. Well, actually, it's 49, second, push the button. 12, second, push the button. And it should give you, for an answer, 0.756995, or it should give you the, the decimal, uh, 49, I'm sorry, 49.2. And then you can take the sine of 49.2 by pushing that button there and uh, end up getting your 0.75699506. Okay, so one of the things to realize is that you cannot, with a calculator, find the secant. Notice it doesn't give us an option there. It gives us sine cosine and tangent, but it does not give secant cotangent or cosecant. Okay, so you have to use the, uh, the identity. So if you're looking for the cotangent of 51.4283 degrees, you have to convert that to tangent. So, if you remember, back in, oh gosh, 1.4, the tangent of theta equals 1 over the tangent of theta. So, what that means for you is the cotangent of 51.4283 degrees is the same as taking the tangent of that. So it would be 1 over the tangent of 51.4283. So you would take the tangent of that and then take 1 divided by that and that would give you the cotangent. That is the only way to do that with a calculator. Okay, that's one of the reasons in section 1.4 they gave you those identities is so that when you're dealing with cotangent secants and cosecants with your calculator, you can still figure it out. So, again, just real quickly, what we did is we took 
this number here and we found the tangent of it and it became 1 over whatever the tangent of that is. I don't know off the top of my head obviously what the tangent of that is but that number would go here and then you just say um, 1 divided by that and that would give you the cotangent of it. So let's look at B. It gives us the secant of 97.977 degrees. And again, you don't have a secant button, but we do know from, again, section 1.4 that the secant of theta, the secant of that angle, is the same as 1 over the cosine of that angle. So the secant of theta equals 1 over the cosine of 97.977. So take your calculator, find the cosine of that, and put it under 1. So it's going to be some number, and then say 1 divided by whatever this number is going to be the answer for the secant. Okay. Um, cotangent, same thing. If it gives you the sine of negative 246, you should just be able to plug that in your calculator because you do have a sine key. It is right there. So up to this point, I have given you things like um, the sine of 47 degrees. And all you do is you put your sine of 47 degrees and, and there's a sine key there and it gives you an answer. Well, let's say, for instance, they don't give you the 47 degrees. Let's say that they give you something like the sine of theta is a number or is approximately 0. that. And what we're interested in is finding out the angle. So the sine or the ratio between the opposite side and the hypotenuse is 0. 0.9677 etc. But we're not interested in that. We're interested in what angle gave us this number. Well, um, oops, let's put that back on there. This is called the inverse. And when we are looking for that, we are saying we're looking for that. Sine to the negative 1 power. And uh, that means that we're looking for that number. So I might write um, point nine six seven seven zero nine one seven zero five so if I have that in an equation they're asking for the angle this means tell me what the angle is that will give me this decimal well you have a handy dandy button on your calculator and see if I can make it bigger you can see it a little bit all right so um, here is the sign button and that right there is sine negative 1. So what you're going to do is you're going to put um, this big number whoops, right here in your calculator then you're going to push second and then you're going to push that one sine negative 1. And when you do that it's going to give you 75.4 degrees. All right, so this is one of the things that's very important when we get into calculus. You have a button on your calculator that you really didn't re even know you had, never paid attention to it, never really affected your answers until now. And that button is this one right here. <clears throat> You're like, what in the heck is that? All right, that is a degree radian. radiance button, DRG. That changes what's up there. See, right now it's in degrees. That's what we want it in. If you push it once, it'll switch to radians, and it'll say RAD. You push it again, and it'll switch to gradients, which is GRAD. We want it in degrees. You will get to start getting the wrong answers when you start using your trig function, sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, you will start getting the wrong answer unless this is in degree. Now later on we'll be switching it to radians, but right now 
it has to be in degrees. So one of the things that you might want to think about doing when you're um, picking up your calculator is first thing, look at that right there. Make sure it's in degree. Another way of doing it um, that folks do is they just take the sine of 90 degrees and it will be 1 if this is in degrees. If it's not in degrees, it won't give you 1 for an answer. So inner sine of 90, enter. If you get 1, then it's in degrees. Or, and the book says that, I just think, why not just look there and see if it says deg? And if it does, then you're good to go. Okay, so um, the rest of this chapter, in fact, there's only one more example here that goes into, um, well, let's do secant of theta in example 2 before we move on. So, secant of theta is approximately 1.045829. All right, so again, we don't have a secant button. So we're going to have to change that to its uh, identity. Or uh, we know that cosine of theta equals 1 over secant of theta. So um, what we're doing is finding the reciprocal of that to get the cosine. So when we take the reciprocal of that, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to replace this with this. So that's 1 over 1.045829. So the cosine of theta equals that. When we do the division, we get 0.948242191913. So we get that big old long hairy number there. So now we can take the uh, the cosine. well, the arc cosine, or the inverse cosine of this. And we should get an angle, and that angle should be about 18.5 degrees. Okay, so let's continue on. Let's do, um, let's look at example number three. Get rid of my calculator here. And it says, when an automobile travels uphill or downhill on a highway, it experiences a force due to gravity. This force, F in pounds, is called grade resistance and is modeled by the equation F equals W sine of theta, where theta is the grade. And what they mean by grade is if this car is going uphill, what is this angle right here as this car goes uphill? That's the grade. And W is the weight of the automobile, <clears throat> and F, we already said, is in pounds. If the automobile is moving uphill, then this is greater than zero degrees. If the grade is going downhill, so if the car is going downhill, the grade is going this way, and it's a negative angle. So if we are going from our x-axis uphill, it's positive, downhill, it's negative, um, or less than zero. A says calculate F to the nearest 10 pounds for a 2,500 pound car. So W is 2,500, and we're trying to calculate F. Traveling uphill grade with theta equals 2.5. All right, so there's our formula. So it shouldn't really be too difficult using that formula. So we do W is 2,500 times the sine of theta, which is 2.5 degrees. Plug that into our calculator. 25, or take the sine of 2.5, multiply that by 2,500. B says calculate F if the truck is 5,000 pounds and it's traveling downhill. So now I'm traveling downhill 
and my theta is negative 6.1 because remember downhill is a negative theta so I put that on there sine of negative 6.1 multiply that by 5000 and our answer then is going to be negative because our truck is going downhill and the last one says calculate f for theta equals 0 and theta is 90 so they're using both um, 0 and 90, so there's two actual questions in this one. We still have the same formula, W sine of theta is our formula, and they're telling me that my theta is 0. So what do we know about anything else? <coughs> Calculate F, da 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 da. Okay, so I don't have a weight of a vehicle. So I'm just going to leave it at W. I'm going to put 0 in there. So the sine of 0 is 0. So 0 times whatever weight that truck is is going to give me a force of 0. If it's, it says in C, it says, oh, what if theta is 90 degrees? Then my force equals my weight times whatever theta is, which is 1. So it's going to be my force is going to equal the weight of the vehicle. Okay, so that's it for uh, lesson 2.3.